Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. It's a great day. I'm Mark Imperial. For the past seven years, I've scoured the globe looking for noteworthy experts, businesses, people, places, and things. On this special edition of the show, we'll meet some of the world's leading professionals in health, nutrition, and fitness, people from all across the country, around the world, and in your town. On this segment, my guest is Will Power Coikes, co-owner of Power Boxing and Fitness out of West Chicago, Illinois. Will, welcome to the program. Hey, Mark. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Will. So tell us, who are the type of folks that are members at Power Boxing and Fitness? Uh, we we have a lot of different walks of life who come into our doors. Um, we have people who want to lose weight. Uh, we have some who want to be an amateur boxer or professional boxer. We have uh, people who just need a, a place to just to kind of relieve stress. Um, we have, you know, we accept um, all, everybody who wants to uh, get healthy, stay in shape and get their goals met, whether it's you know, losing weight, becoming a pro or just simply just uh, relieving stress. So right. anybody, everyone. <laughs> right on. So, yeah, boxing's hot the and the workout, no doubt, is hot. So but I know that, you know, for a lot of people out there, boxing fitness sounds a little intimidating if they're not used to that. So can you speak to that and tell people a little bit more about what it's about? I mean, are they thinking this is fighting or what if, if it's just like, a, you know, a housewife wants to lose weight? Talk about that. Yeah, um, the, the, the guess, I guess the word boxing has its own, uh, you know, pre notion thought of what is already detailed when you think about boxing training. And, you know, we want to be uh, able to let everybody know as long as so long as you got hands and feet, you're able to box. Anybody can box. We have a we have someone who's um, 50, 58 years old and she is like one of our top a- athletes there. You know, we like to our, our slang, our, our motto is train the fighter in you. And um, I think as humans, we all have struggles. We all have something that we are fighting for, um, whether it's financial, health goals, whatever the case is, we're always fighting something. And uh, I guess the boxing training, we like to bring that fight out and make it into a workout. And uh, it's, it's awesome to see, you know, you know, having a pro boxer in the same class as somebody who's trying to lose weight or somebody who's trying to learn boxing. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the drills that we do are, are the fundamentals. You know, you can't, you just because the, 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 I like to tell people the most, the four dangerous words you could put into a sentence is I already know that, uh, a pro boxer like myself, I already know how to throw a jab. It doesn't mean that I'm never going to throw it ever again, or it's never going to be seen anywhere in any other combination or drill. We're always going to be throwing that same jab again and again. And uh, that's something that I try to really uh, focus on whoever you are. If you're you're a pro, if you're an amateur, if you you are somebody who knows how to box and compete and be successful in it, it doesn't mean you should stop learning how to throw a jab a different way or learning the same jab and finding a new way for you to have a better outcome with it. So uh, we do have hesitant uh, people who are unsure, but, you know, I always check out, I always say, you know what, just check out our website, check out our videos, you know, talk to me, you know, your first step is always to get it, to get a contact with somebody. And from there we can make our own, from there they can make their judgment call. You know, I, I totally believe in what you're saying. I have found that the most successful people on the planet remain coachable. That's like the number one thing. So I see, Will, that you've got a couple of different programs there at Power Boxing and Fitness. You've got something called Box Fit, and then you've got traditional boxing. Can you tell us the difference? Yeah, Box Fit is my version of of boxing training. You know, when I when I'm training for a fight, when I'm preparing for for anything conditioning, I like to go through a box fit style workout, which pretty much means 
Um, there's going to be boxing training, boxing drills, but there's all going to be fitness in it. You know, you, in order to be a boxer, you got to be fit, you know? And so box fit is, is the, is the best way I can explain and what it is. I go through a 12, 12 round program with 12 minutes of core. The first four rounds are warm up. We'll do some calisthenics, some uh, shadow boxing, some foot drills, uh, some agility, plyometrics, and some strength training, all within those four rounds. So the first round, we kind of stretch it out. Second round, we kind of let our hands go, shadow boxing. Third round, we do some footwork and some agility, plyometrics. And the fourth round, we'll go into some strength training. And then from there, we have the last remaining rounds to work boxing and boxing drills. And in between those rounds, we have an active rest, something that keeps you moving, but it keeps you rested like a plank or a push-up. Slow enough, but still working. Um, and, and that's been an effective system that we've been using at the gym, and it's been working and helping people. And after those rounds are done, we go into a 12-minute core and we do a lot of sit-ups, you know, a lot of core work, um, and and it's and it's great. It's a great uh, a great regimen that I came up with. Or it, it's no one's reinventing the wheel, but it is definitely something that I find to be more effective than just hey, I'm going to hit the bag for four rounds. Hey, I'm going to lift some weights for a couple sets and call it a day. With this, you're going to get the same outcome: twelve rounds, twelve minutes of core. But the best part is I like to switch it up. There's so much dynamics and combinations that you can do in boxing drills that will not only target the fundamentals, but also target your footwork. Not only target your footwork, but it'll target strength training. It's like a big hybrid of everything. And you don't know subconsciously that you are working footwork, but it's there. You know, if I don't, if I don't say we're doing footwork, I'm, I, I'm pretty much hiding the fact that you're doing something without yourself knowing. <laughs> and you know what? That's what keeps it fun and interesting because it's it's engaging yeah. everybody, and it's it's there's always something fresh and new happening. So people are going to stick with this kind of a workout. It's not something that people get bored of. Absolutely not. And and the thing is, you know, when 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 someone says I'm getting in a rut, I'm in a plateau, um, I, I like to call it out. I'm like that's BS. And they laugh and they think I'm talking about the bad word. I'm talking about BS, meaning belief system. You know, uh, when, when someone comes to me and say, I don't like to lift weights. It's just boring for me. I just feel like I'm not doing enough or I don't know what. I, I think that we as humans have a belief system because we don't want to get out our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And um, the greatest, the greatest failure of all is not making any progress. You know, you're either growing or you're dying. You know, you're not making any progress in your comfort zone. And it's that fear of the unknown, but beliefs can help you in a relationship. It can make you live a happier life. Um, all these incredible results come through mental toughness. And so if, if someone has a belief system that, oh, I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it, they're never going to go anywhere towards it. But if we have a belief in something that we're going to succeed in, we are going to take every step that's possible to make it happen. So, so long as you believe it, you can go and do it. And anything that can slow you down is your own thought process. And I said, stop the BS, you know, stop that belief system and, and tell yourself that you can do it. You know, it's, it's the same thing that holds me down. If I, if I think about anything, you know, I think we all have it. I think that's uh, pretty much bred into us as human beings. Um, you know, we always, you know, prehistoric humans, we had to watch out for the lion, you know, so we had to figure out and be cunning and think that before it actually happened. And that's how we're able to survive. And I think that still holds true today when we uh, don't want to go for change. You know, a lot of people nowadays are really making that new year's resolution to finally stop the bs like you say you know and and finally yeah. get in there and get fit so for somebody that's like considering this kind of a workout for themselves but they might be intimidated or 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 they've never done something like this tell me you know take us through what that's going to look like their first session what should what should they expect and and should they be afraid of anything oh absolutely not um i think I think, again, you, if someone's, it always starts with that first thought, I want to do boxing. Now it takes someone to not only take that word and, and also put into action. So they, they look up 
you know, a boxing gym. They find the gym they like. That's the second step to success. The third step is they call. And the fourth step is they show up. And the fifth step is to just try it, you know? And then from there, they're making all these steps to take what they first thought of. I want to try boxing. I want to do it. So what they can expect on their first day is to forget about their initial beliefs, you know, that stop that BS then and there and let the trainer, let myself just coach you through it. Um, I can show anybody how to throw the, the first basic punches and teach them and demonstrate them and they're actually doing it. But that first minute or that first five minutes of knowing the punches it doesn't mean you know boxing right away. As soon as we learn the basics, the fundamentals, the stands, the hands, now all comes in fitness. Without fitness, you're never going to throw that basic punch the same way you did the first time because we will drain energy out after a while. So once we get, go past those first four rounds, I give you the the first fundamental combinations that will carry on through the next eight remaining rounds. Those basic drills that we did in the beginning are going to show up in the in the boxing training itself. It never goes away. You know, the stance will never go away. The jab will never go away. So what someone could expect is making mistakes, is learning from their mistakes, and is continuing on to push themselves through their fitness you know, emotions, you know, their, their mental toughness that they have to kind of push through. You know, one time I had someone, you know, absolutely just throwing bad technique and they're like, coach, I feel like I'm doing it wrong. I'm like, well, how do you know if you're doing it right? You know, like, well, you're going to tell me, I'm like, absolutely I am. But it, it's, it's, it's amazing to see someone to call out their own, like, Hey, this doesn't feel right. And they're themselves already training. And I let, the first timers to just let their hands go. The, the, I just want them to experience punching. I want them to experience the stands. I don't want to be that nitpicker. No, no, do it like this. No, like this. Not like, because that gets frustrating. That could tear someone's mind down if they've never done something like that. You know, um, there, of course, there's people who are naturals and the ones who are naturally gifted in knowing how to throw a correct punch. I'm going to expose them in their fitness. I'm going to show, I'm going to, you, you got a good jab. You, you're learning so quick. Now do this a hundred times and they tire out. <laughs> See, that's what we got to work on. <laughs> you so know. everybody comes in with their own, you know, their own progress. And I'm going to work on that progress for them. You know what I think is cool is what just made me think about it. While people, you know, consistency is obviously the key to success here. And, in anyone's yeah. training and fitness. And what you pointed out is people are going to be so focused on uh, like perfecting and, and uh, improving their technique that even when they're doing it wrong, they're still burning calories and they're getting fit in the process. So they're yeah. not even realizing that they're doing work. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and that's, 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 the, that's the one thing that I always try to focus on. I mean, even in people's day-to-day -day goals, when they say, I want to make X amount of money, um, and they, they're only stuck with their active income, which is their job at work. If you get sick, if you hurt yourself, you're not going to get paid. And how are you going to make that extra step towards that extra income? And it, it could be a different goal as well, even weight loss. You know, they, they have their regimen already, but what's it going to really take to get to the next level? And I think every action that you take towards that, that dream or that goal, every, any little step counts towards that big result. I mean, I'm, I'm cleaning my, I, I could be at the gym right now, cleaning up, you know, the dirt on the floor. And I can say, I'm wasting my time. I could be doing something else, marketing or calling people. But if you really look at it, a, a clean gym, it's a successful gym. So, you know, that little action of cleaning up the gym goes towards my financial making at the end of the, of, of of, you know, when Bretons do, you know, and it's just, it goes with a lot of things. And those are the things that people need to uh, also remember that, you know, even though you're doing wrong, you're still burning those calories. You're still working hard going towards that end result of losing weight. So it doesn't matter if you're doing right or wrong, so long as you're doing it.
That is a great comparison because, you know, that that is the Disney philosophy, too. The cleanliness of the park, the cleaning and the painting overnight of all the, the fence posts, that all goes in their marketing budget because that clean park, just like a clean gym, yeah. is, is what brings people and makes people happy and keeps them coming back. So, Will, check this out. Not only are you a certified NASM personal trainer, but you're also an undefeated professional boxer, welterweight. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I am. So, t- so tell me this. You, you're mm-hmm. obviously that shows how passionate you are about the sport and the fitness. But it wasn't always that way. What what inspired you to get started in fitness and boxing? Oh man, you know, um, I used to not like boxing. I used to really not being told, you know, that I'm ro- that I'm not doing it right. I'm, and I was told that I was doing it wrong, that I'm not working hard enough, you know, how, you know, a tough coach or uh, an accountability coach can really tell you. And that always affected my mental strength. And then uh, when I started getting the support that I needed through my peers, my teammates, my, even my coach itself, you know, you know, that's what really got me going and, you know, getting in good shape because I was doing soccer and other sports, you know, that all helped. But I were already at that time, watch my diet after watching, you know, documentaries like uh, Super Size Me. I started kind of thinking about, you know, health and then I started thinking about diet, portion control, fitness, and then accountability. Those are the four tips that anybody need everybody needs to be in order to be successful in fitness and health without those four tips you know you can't just do it and just do it you can't be reactive you got to have a plan and having fitness having a, a coach having you know that coaching accountability motivation all that into into a coach bubble uh, fitness coach portion control and uh, nutrients those four things is what help anybody achieve um, health and fitness. And when I was at a point in my life, you know, not liking boxing, and then I found that that support because I already had the fitness, I already had the diet and the portion control and the control. I had the coaching, but I was lacking that motivation and that support. And I was luckily surrounding myself with positive people who said, you know, well, you have a gift, you should really do it. And I had my own belief system, you know, my BS telling me, no, I want a normal job. I want this. I want that. I want to go to college. And even at that time, you know, like that was my plan. And then I woke up one day and said, you know what, I want to do something that's going to be affecting and helping people's lives for the rest of their lives, because it's helping me so much with the people I'm surrounding with that I'm just going to fully commit onto something I believe in. And that's what really got me. It's not so much the professional boxing career. It was more of that, the, the community that I was involving myself with, you know, that really pushed me forward. And I've met a lot of great fighters, coaches and clients and, you know, everyone, um, including yourself, Mark, as we go back and that, and that's what really, you know, pushed me forward to be a pro boxer even more. And uh, being a, a business owner now, and it, it holds me more accountable with every, you know, technique and drill that I show someone. I don't want to show them a crappy drill. And the next thing they know, they get knocked out in their fight <laughs> because, hey, you taught me this drill. <laughs> so it, it holds a lot of accountability and it keeps me motivated to be a better, harder, undefeated professional boxer. Do you know what? The way to mastery is to teach and you're doing it, man. I'll tell you what, um, I'm cl- so glad to see that because the world is definitely a better place with the choices you're making, Will. So I, I appreciate that. So to wrap Thanks. this up, Will, uh, for somebody who's considering, you know, finally saying, you know what, I'm finally going to lose the weight. I'm finally going to get into shape. I'm finally going to check out this boxing. Um, what What's one thing that they should really consider to make sure that they are successful in their endeavor and they get started and they stick with it? I think um, in order to be successful and in order to stick with it, I think like, you know, it kind of goes back to who you're surrounding yourself with. You know, everyone, I think everyone has heard uh, the same advice being told to them, but what's not connecting the dots is 
finding that one role model. I'm not saying I want to be someone else's role model without them wanting it. But I think if there's somebody else other than myself or anybody else, for that matter, we all need inspirational stories. But if people just close off their mind and don't believe it's real, then there's nothing you can do to become motivated and get the results you want. And so even if what I'm telling, you know, everyone right now listening, um, if what I'm telling you is a lie, if I'm saying that, it, it, you know, I'm lying when I say that I, this is how I got started, or I'm lying that I'm being successful, I'm lying. If I'm, and if, and if, but if you believe it and it's positive in your life, then, then it doesn't matter if it's true or not, you know, so long as it serves you and so long as it serves your life. And so as someone who's looking to be successful, um, because, you know, my, my story is authentic. My story is true. I want to hear your story and what they had to struggle because that will motivate me, you know, more to go further to hear someone say, well, um, I was like this when I got started. Now I'm like that. And hearing their story and believing what they're going through is going to, what's going to keep them going. You know, is that that initial belief system of positivity that and results that they're they're accomplishing is what's going to keep them going. And that's really that's really my advice to anybody is to really start with your story, because no one's going to improve you other than you. Fitness is like a relationship. You can't just cheat on it and expect it to work. <laughs> that's sage advice, Will. Uh for, for our listeners out there who want to connect with you, who want to go to West Chicago, check out the gym, try out a class, how can folks connect with you and learn more? Where should they go? Um, they could, you know, visit the website, powerboxingfitness.com. They can also visit the, my Facebook page, Willpower Coics. You can add me on Facebook, friend request me. I'm on, all, on every social media. I'm Will the Boxer. And if there's something that, you know, that's holding them back so far as money, I have a lot of free advice. I have a lot of free tips to get you started, to get you going until you're ready. So um, I may not, you know, and I may not be working with you right now, but I can work with you online. That's awesome. Will, hey, man, this has been great. I really loved talking to you today, and I appreciate you taking the time to join me on the program. I wish you continued success for you, for power boxing and fitness, and for all of your members. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. It was a pleasure to be on here, and uh, and I'll talk to you soon. I've got to get you on my podcast. Sounds awesome. Thanks, Will. I'm Mark Imperial. This is a special edition. It's New Year. So we're hitting some nutrition, health, and fitness on this segment. My guest is Sia Cooper from DiaryOfAFitMommy.com out of Florida. Sia, welcome to the program. Hi. Hey, Sia. Good morning. So, so it's an honor having you on the program. I see so much fascinating and great stuff about you, and I'd love to dig right in. So, Sia, tell Absolutely. the listeners... Uh, what is Diary of a Fit Mommy, for those who may not have visited your site yet, and uh, who is it that you serve, if that's not so obvious? <laughs> Diary of a Fit Mommy started out as just a, a blog to help educate uh, pregnant and postpartum women on health and fitness, and then it turned into my actual business. And, you know, I got my personal training certification about three, you know, almost three years ago, and most of my clients are those who want to become pregnant, those who are already pregnant, and those who have just had a baby and are wanting to snap back in shape. So I guess you could say, you know, most of the female population, you know, it, is it basically my audience. And so it's great to work with, you know, just a the general ladies out there, you know, because a lot of ladies, you know, they want to know how can I keep, you know, fit during pregnancy you know, here for this baby, you know, I'm there to help. And then afterwards, you know, I'm there to help, you know, as well. It's kind of like a two part deal. And I love doing it. Right on. So I'd imagine uh, when, you know, wannabe pregnant moms come to you and recently pregnant moms. I mean, fitness is a concern. And now we're at New Year's. It's even a double whammy, right? So are there right. mis are there misconceptions out there or are there fears that they have about, you know, their pregnancy and, and gaining weight and, and getting fit again? What kind of questions do you get? Um, the main, well, 
I don't know if it's, well, I, I do get questions about this, but I get uh, more comments about it. Uh, well, backlash is, you know, is our fitness is not safe during pregnancy. And, you know, I was in the media um, over the spring of, you know, 2016, and it was just like a whirlwind because here I was, you know, pregnant, you know, they said with a six pack because, you know, there was pictures of me, right, you know, videos of me running on the treadmill, lifting heavy weights, you know, wearing my, you know, 35 uh, pound toddler on the back of, you know, me while, you know, doing squats while pregnant, you know, it was just so much backlash and questioning whether or not fitness is safe during pregnancy. And that's probably uh, one of the main questions that I get is yep. because, you know, we're all still stuck in this old age thinking that a pregnant lady cannot lift, you know, more than five pounds. What's, that's what's the truth true. about that? What have now, you discovered? The truth is, so many doctors to, you know, CYA to cover their butts or CYB, <laughs> they <laughs> recommend, you know, pregnant women not lift. Now, that is right for some. However, uh, if a woman has been active, you know, fit, lifting, running, crossfitting, whatever, prior to pregnancy, that means her body is already conditioned and she has enough muscle memory to support that action during pregnancy. But like I said, it's, it's really a case-by-case -case basis, and it's up to one's doctor to really determine that. However, you know, I was lifting, you know, 70, 80, 100 pounds, and, I, I, you know, my daughter was just fine. So, but, but for the next lady, it might be a completely different story, but, you know, fitness during pregnancy is now actually much encouraged these days because it does help prevent excess weight. It does, you know, allow you to snap back faster due to muscle memory. You know, you retain that muscle memory by, you know, keeping those muscles active, not sitting, you know, as a couch potato for nine months. So what is the key then? What would you tell uh, a mommy at, uh, for what is their key to success? Mm -hmm when it comes to staying fit through their pregnancy and, and recovering uh, right after pregnancy? Well, there's going to be a lot of derailers during pregnancy. You know, there's fatigue, there's nausea for some. Luckily, I did not get hit with the nausea, with the sick bug, <laughs> but I was tired a lot. Uh, basically, do any little bit that you can, you know, get moving, you know, take a walk after dinner at night. But uh, basically, just doing any little bit that you can, you know, a lot, that goes into prenatal fitness and back is also what you eat now, mm -hmm. you know, during pregnancy, there's so many cravings. I mean, I've heard some crazy things like pickles and ice cream together and you know, just some weird stuff, but basically, you know, don't eat for two. I know, I know that people have said that time and time again, but you do not have to eat for two because baby gets what you get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you consume an excess amount of calories, then guess what? That weight's going to stick right back on you. And it's going to be harder to get the excess weight when you get, you know, harder to get it off after you give birth. So what kind of uh, exercises are, you know, are, are safe uh, and what would you say to stay away from? Well, it depends, you know, on the, on the individual. But uh, some exercises are good, you know, like, like cardio walking, um, you know, uh, jogging. If you, I mean, so, and uh, I had a lot of comments saying that the baby was going to get shaken. And, you know, I had some really ugly comments on that video. But, uh, you know, running during pregnancy is absolutely fine if you're up for it, if your body's conditioned for it. Um, squats are good. Lunges are good. Uh, lying on your back after the 12th week of pregnancy because as baby grows, it will be, you know, it'll put pressure on your vena cava and it will cause you to faint. You'll get lightheaded, dizzy. So stay off your back. Uh, some women can't lay on their back their entire pregnancy, even in the beginning. So uh, avoid, you know, supine, uh, which is basically laying on your back exercises. I would avoid most because it risks, you run the risk of developing a condition called diastasis recti, which basically is your abdominal splitting apart to accommodate your abdominal pressure. And so, you know, I've never gotten it because, you know, I, I don't do much abs. I don't train much abs during pregnancy. And that's exactly why, you know, that's another common, uh, common question I get. Can I, you know, work my abs during pregnancy? And to, to be honest, I don't see a big point. Yes, you can. There's some certain moves you can do, but I don't really see the point. I don't see the point risking, you know, splitting your muscles in half. As you mentioned, when you first started blogging and, mm -hmm. and you know, you've got some of this, 
backlash mm-hmm. on some of your videos. How did you deal with that? How did you, f- you know, feel about that? That usually that would be enough to stop somebody um, in their tracks. Well, see, it wasn't the first time that happened because you know I lifted weight not as much. I wasn't as active with my first pregnancy, but I did lift weights here and there, and I posted some photos. And um, I got a lot of ugly comments, and it hurt. Like, it, you know, I was new to blogging. I was new to putting myself out there. I thought I was doing a good job. And, you know, I had all these comments just saying that I was child abuse. These crazy just comments. But, you know, that's what you get, like I said, when you put yourself out there. I mean, you're subject to mm-hmm. love and the hate. So, you know, you got to take it for what it's worth. But the second time around, you know, I did more. I posted more. And I was braver. And I guess that what, you know, what led to me going viral because I put it all out there. But um, I didn't really care what people had to say. I mean, I saw it because I read all my notifications, good and bad. Um, But, you know, I know that a lot of these people are either bored or they're severely misinformed. So uh, second time around, I guess I become a little... uh, thicker skin, you know? Yeah, that's great. And I'm glad to see that because, you know, people that have an important message out there for the world, they, they have to have that thick skin. And that's, you know, that is just the way it is. Uh, and, and I'm glad to hear that mm-hmm. that, that you got that because otherwise, well, there's absolutely no way you'd, have, you'd gone th- gotten this far if you didn't have that thick skin already. Mm-hmm. So, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah, tell tell me, Sia. So you mentioned you you got your your fitness certification a few years ago, but what came first? Uh-huh. What motivated you? Like, were you, what came first? Was it the 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 fitness, or was it the the pregnancy? What inspired you to get into fitness? Well, at the fitness actually came a few years, well, a couple years before the pregnancy. Um, back in 2010, you know, I was a nursing nursing student. Uh, trying to make ends meet. Um, I was eating, you know, Chick-fil-A kids meals at night for dinner because that was all I could afford. You know, I, I didn't have money to meal prep. I didn't have money for healthy foods and more, most, you know, more importantly, I was healthy. And due to the stress and the binge eating, I eventually, uh, my weight skyrocketed up to over 150, which is really, you know, big for my petite five foot three frame. And um, after, you know, I graduated, I finally decided, well, I, you know, I need some help. <laughs> like, I didn't care about how I felt. I felt sluggish. I ate fast food. I drank soda. I was like, wow, you know, if I don't stop, you know, this is really going to not be good for me. And so I made this change after a friend said, hey, see, I want you to watch this documentary called Food, Inc. on Netflix. And so I watched this documentary. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, it changed my life. I, I, I went to my pantry right after I finished it and I threw out all the, you know, chips, cookies, sodas, and I made a healthy grocery, you know, shopping list. And I went out for the first time to actually with the goal of eating healthy. And, you know, I wouldn't say I quit cold tur- turkey because I, you know, slipped up here and there. Mm-hmm. But over the course of nine months, I lost 45 pounds from just clean eating alone. Wow. And so definitely the weight loss came first. And, you know, whenever I got pregnant, I was very, you know, oh, you know, I lost all this weight. So obviously it was a mental challenge to realize and tell myself that, hey, you're going to have to gain some fat because you're growing a baby here. So, you know, that, you know, I handled it pretty well. I, you know, did a little bit here and there. I was also working full time as a nurse. So, uh, you know, I did as much as I could. But and then the second time around, I was like, oh, I got this. And, you know, <laughs> I was staying home and, you know, this was my business this time around. And so, you know, I had already created a home gym and I gave myself no excuses to work out five days a week for 45 minutes. So, and then, you know, after I gave, I mean, I I pushed my daughter Everly out and, you know, two pushes and labor was fast. It was great. It was, it was like a dream the second round, the first time around, it was 22 hours. And I I really did a difference. (laughs) Wow. So that's a terrific story. Yeah. See, this. let me switch gears just for a second here, because what you really inspired okay. me to, to ask you is about, you know, if you were to inspire uh, another mommy that that's at home, maybe considering mm-hmm. a business uh, in anything that they mm-hmm. do, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, advertising, business, consulting, whatever it is that they may do. Let's talk a little bit about your business today. Like you said, it started out as a blog. Did you have the intention of turning that into a business? No, no, gosh, no. 
Um, it was just a hobby. You know, I started the blog with my weight loss that I mentioned earlier, whenever mm -hmm. I wanted to change, I was like, hmm, okay, you know, it, blogs were on the rise in 2010. I was like, you know what, I want to start this free little blog on Blogger, and I'm just going to use it to post my progress photos, and I'll use it to post my meals and my workouts, just to kind of, you know, motivate myself to lose mm -hmm. the weight, because, I mean, that worked like a charm. Mm -hmm. And then I started you know, seeing all this traffic, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, people are actually caring, they're reading, you know, they're listening to me and people are asking me, me tips. So I'd get emails in my inbox and I felt like, oh my gosh, like it was just, you know, a sudden rush of excitement to know that people wanted my help because here I was, I didn't think I was fit, you know, <laughs> I was nowhere that I needed to be, but I was already inspiring people. I was like, you know, cool. And, but, you know, eventually I, uh, I put blogging aside because, I, um, you know, I had to focus on nursing. I was working full time, mm -hmm. still trying to make ends meet. And, you know, my husband and I, we got married and then I became pregnant six months later with my son. And he, he gave me the option to stay home. He said, look, I know you really like blocking. And it, at this point, it wasn't about starting a business. He was just like, look, you can stay home, you know, be the housewife that you want to be. Because that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to raise my kids. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to have to send them away in daycare at six weeks old, only for me to go back to work, you know, anxious about them eight hours a day. I wanted to be the one to raise them. I didn't want another stranger to raise my child. And, you know, it, my heart goes out to all the moms out there who have to go to work and who do not have the option to stay home. But uh, back to what I was saying, my husband allowed me to stay home. I said, okay, cool. You know, blogging will I'll resume blogging. Did I took a little part-time job at FYE as a manager in the local mall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause I had to do something outside the house. Mm -hmm. while I was pregnant. I had no kids to take care of at the time. So, um, you know, and then I've, I've continued blogging and this time, you know, I was pregnant. So I posted prenatal workouts, this and that and the other, and I put them on Pinterest. And I mean, it lit up, you know, I had called my blog Diary of Fit Mommy. It was not a bit business at this time. It lit up. People actually started asking me for nutrition plans and diet plans. I'm like, well, you know, well, I'm not really qualified to do this yet. So I just kept on blogging and then, I, you know, posted my bounce back photos after my son. And then finally, it just, you know, my husband and I sat down one day and it just clicked. I'm like, you know, people are coming to me wanting plans and I do not have a plan to offer them. What if I go through NASM and get certified and create a good plan for them based off of what I do? Mm -hmm. Yep, I became a certified personal trainer with a specialization in fitness, nutrition, and women's fitness. And I created plans and I got to help people and I got to actually, you know, do the job I felt I was always meant to do. And that's that. And we filed, you know, for it to become an LLC three years ago. And it became official. And, you know, for all the moms out there who want to stay home with their kids or make money for home and, you know, start a business, because there's lots out there. Um, you know, I actually have a blogging ebook that I created to help moms turn their blogs into businesses. But I want them to know that it, no idea is too crazy because if you would have asked me or, or told me, you know, 10 years ago that I'd be staying home running a business. I would, I would laugh. I would say, no freaking way. Like, there's just no way. I, I didn't, I went to school for nursing and I quit my career when I went to school for to do something that I, I really. Wow, that, that is, time on. that is like incredible. So I, did, so, I mean, I don't have a business degree. I don't have marketing degree. I don't have a business team. I don't have a marketing team. I run my, I don't have an assistant. It's just me and my husband. And it's just incredible. Guess what? If I were to go back to school, it'd be in business. So I, I found my love through my hobby. And I just want them to know, you know, the ladies out there, to just feel inspired to become their own girl boss. You know, I mean, you can do it. You just got to find what you're good at and find a way to serve the people. There are so many great lessons in what you just said. I, I wanted to point out a couple of them. Because <laughs> first of all, I, I tell okay, people a sure. lot about... Uh, you know, if you want to discover what, what it is you want to do or what you enjoy, just go do stuff. You just go do stuff right. and, and the world will figure itself right. out. You and, never know. <laughs> and you, you discovered exactly. it. So that's amazing. The second thing that I think is really key exactly. in what you said is 
you didn't wait for the world to anoint you an expert in anything. You had discovered a pain that people had that needed to be served, and you decided, I'm going to be the one to serve them. So you went and got whatever specialized knowledge you needed to do in your certifications, and you created the solution for the people that were waiting for it. And the people, a third lesson built into this, is the people quite didn't care about credentials. They saw that you were living the life they wanted to live. And they knew that you were the person that they would connect with. So they will listen to you, even though you were like, you know, got the the certification after the fact. So hugely big lessons. Absolutely. And and on that fact that people don't care about uh, certification, um, you know, I see that a lot in the fitness industry. There's so many people out there selling plans that they've created and they're not certified. So if I can just, you know, kind of get that in there, hey, you know, ask for certifications, you know, it's okay to ask a trainer, you know, for their credentials, just, Mm -hmm. you know, a screenshot, a photo of, you know, just anything, just proof. It's okay to ask for proof because, you know, you want to keep yourself safe. Yeah. Let them know that you, you, you vetted out this information Mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form, Mm -hmm. you know, see it when, as you were talking, as you were talking about, you Mm -hmm. know, um, um, early success and accidental success, for example, there are tons of business owners listening to my program that say, I could never get a single visitor to my website. And here you are not even trying. Did you really like not do anything or learn anything or apply anything to get that initial traffic? to your blog? Uh, You know, I didn't start doing ads until about a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, well, well, no, well, well, about a year, year and a half, two years ago, because I finally had some money to do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, seriously, my business cost not much at all to start up. You know, I went to Lugal Zoom, I paid, you know, the few hundred bucks it took to become an LLC. But most of the followers I've gotten have been organic and, you know, with not much effort. It's just being realistic and honest. But, you know, a, a good tip for those website traffic is one word, and that is Pinterest. Pinterest is amazing. Ah. Um, even to this day, I don't blog as much anymore because I'm, you know, busy selling my plan. But if I go to my WordPress analytics and I look that up, guess what? My number one traffic source will be. It's Pinterest, and it always has been Pinterest. Millions, millions of women view Pinterest every single day, and most of those women have the mind to buy something. Yep, most of your shoppers are going to be on Pinterest, and that's why products do so well. Um, you know, you you pin, you, you pick out a good image from your website, you write a, a great caption that lures people. You know, or like a call to action, like, you know, click here, or read more, click on this pen, you know, and people will do it. If, if you don't ask them to do it, they're not going to do it. Or read in this, you know. That is really sage advice. So, and Pinterest is free. Like, I mean, Pinterest now luckily has their own ads that they run, and I use that now. But Pinterest is free. Like all business owners out there, you've got to use Pinterest. It's your best friend. So when you started monetizing your your blog, uh, what did that look mm-hmm. like? Because I imagine now you make a full time living. You you've you've totally quit nursing to stay at home, uh, mm-hmm. and to yeah. be with your kids and and live in the the life of your dreams, uh, doing what it is that you love. Mm-hmm. So what did the business look like? Did it take off like a rocket, or was there a growth phase that that you had to go through where you weren't quite making a living on it? Um. You know, there were some times where me and my husband were, you know, not very comfortable, <laughs> you know, in the beginning. I, I remember when, uh, you know, we were, I was pregnant working at SYE, you know, managing that, you know, the music store. And uh, at dinner at night, you know, I had to scrape some change to get, you know, $4 or so from a, for a slice of pizza, you know, at the food court. So, you know, when I quit nursing, it was really scary. Mm-hmm. It was really bold, but... Here's how I saw it. I could either stay in a career field that I'm miserable at every single day, do the same thing every single day, or I could go do something different, you know, because I already knew the path that I was going on and I didn't like it. Uh huh. So I could either be comfortable or I could take a risk and have potentially great things happen to me. And that's, I mean, that's what happened. I mean, I could have failed. 
And there were times that I have failed, but you know, you just, you got to keep up. It was really steady. And I connected with the people and built my following based off of free information from my blog. Cause I, I blog a lot. I blog maybe one or two blogs every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I had the time to back then, but I also enjoyed it. I love spreading free information. And that's how I have gained most of my people. It wasn't until, you know, halfway throughout my career that I started actually selling a product. Wow, that's terrific. So how do you serve people today? Like, uh, what is it that they're purchasing from you? You said the, their workout plans. What else do you have to offer? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the workout. Well, it's all digital guides. So, so I have my strong body guide program with a clean eating program uh, with that. Um, I have a cookbook. I have, you know, how to take your blog to a business in 10 weeks. Well, my goal for the new year, I'm about to start working on a 2.0, you know, the version two of my strong body guide. So it's really exciting and it's going to be time consuming. But I mean, eventually I would have at or selling my own workout gear, but that's, I don't want to get too far into it. I just want to enjoy where I'm at now and just take it a day at a time. Yeah, that's terrific. Congratulations. So, you know, to get, to wrap this Thank up, you. what's one thing that... A, you know, a wannabe fit mommy, what's a one, what's one thing they should really consider if they want to be successful this new year uh, with their pregnancy, with their fitness, what should they consider? Uh, the health of their baby. <laughs> That's the first and most important thing. You know, a lot of uh, people will tell me that, I, well, told me, not will tell me, they have told me that I'm selfish for putting my baby through all that, you know, jumping and running and squatting or whatever during pregnancy. But you know what? I had one thing in mind and it wasn't my body or my aesthetics. It was my baby. It was the health of my child because fitness during pregnancy not only benefits mommy, but it benefits baby. And that, I mean, that's a good motivation. Wow. That's terrific. So Sia, uh, Mm -hmm. for all our listeners out there that want to learn more, want to connect with you, want to stay connected with you, where should we send them? Where do they go to find you? Uh, you can go to www.diaryofafitmommy.com, and I have my you know social media channels listed on there, and you can just click on the button, and it'll send you right to there. Um, most of my followers, you know, other than the blog, are on Instagram, where I post pretty often, so they can follow me there as well at you know instagramcom official. Sia, it's been terrific speaking with you. I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. You had a, lot, a ton to share. I enjoyed. And- it's like yeah, I'm a yeah. I'm a marketing junkie myself. So it's like when you get me started, I'm like, oh, there's like a hundred more questions I want to ask you. So maybe we'll have to do a few. Oh, we'll have to do another, time. another interview, like straight about the how to turn your blog into a business. Could we do that? Absolutely, I could talk that all day. <laughs> Remember, I, I I serve the blogging audience and I serve moms. <laughs> yeah, you've got my my definitely got my marketing glands, uh, you know, growing now. <laughs> <course>. So. <laughs> That's terrific. See ya. Of course. Thank- we can talk business anytime. Awesome. Love it. Uh, that's a sign of a true um, entrepreneur uh, and uh, a, a, an addict to success in business. So congratulations, Sia, you. on all of your success so far. I wish you continued success you. for you, for Diary of a Fit Mommy, and uh, for all of your followers and, and clients and members. Thank you so much for having me on the show, and I hope you have a very happy new year. This is another special edition of the program on health, nutrition, and fitness, especially for the new year. On this segment, my guest is Caroline Wheeland from Summit Performance Training out of Chicago, Illinois. Caroline, welcome to the program. Hey, Mark. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. So tell me about what your specialty is. What's your specialty there at Summit Performance Training, and who are the types of folks that you help? Well, at Summit Performance Training, we like to pride ourselves on being a different kind of trainer. Sure, the trainer can develop programs for you and develop you know, a program where we're going to lift, we're going to deadlift some squats, I'm going to count your reps, maybe you might do some kind of cardio, something like the traditional trainers, but what we like to think of is that we are different trainers. We want to work with you to make you stronger and better, but in working in correct form, working with the tools that you have, but making you better and stronger. The foundation for our, our training is foundation training and be activated. 
those are our two modalities that we use as the basis for t- developing our training plans and using the exercises and techniques developed within those uh, for the programs we put together for our clients. All right on. Yeah, I want to dig into those in a little bit. But, you know, first and foremost, you know, it's New Year's. And, you know, the number one yeah. New Year's resolution for most people are, is what? Lose weight, right? So yeah. what is it that you find that people do in New Year's? You guys must experience a fitness rush, so to speak. Do people stay motivated and stick with it or do people like start and quit? Well, that's where we come in. We try, we like to keep you challenged. We want to keep you motivated. We want to keep you strong. And so we work with you. We think of it as a partnership. So for example, you know, we've got the rush. We've got several new clients coming on board this week. And in our initial interview, we asked them, what do you want to do to get in shape? And they'll say, well, I started running. I was running for a few weeks, but then I stopped because then I started to get sore. My knee hurt, my ankle hurt. Uh, and then they stopped, so they need some help. What we look, what we find is that when we work with the clients and we look at them and look at the issues, we see that certain things, especially if you haven't been, I guess, for lack of a better word, as mobile as you before, um, deconditioned, I guess, is a, is a term. Um, and people just like, I'm going to go out and run five miles. Mm-hmm. Well, the body, maybe they have been sitting at a desk, you know, been a desk jockey and, you know, that's pretty much the norm. And, uh, you know, most people, not a lot of people work on their feet nowadays just because of technology and, and, you know, there's desk jobs and that's how we work and it's intense and people are sitting. And so what we find is that people's bodies aren't used to being upright, getting mm-hmm. up in alignment. And we might have clients who come to us with low back issues. And as I said, knee issues or ankle issues, So that's where we come in with foundation training. Um, Foundation training, what it does is it gets the body in alignment and puts it and helps the body integrate the muscles with its structure and how we were built so that we can have better movement and move without pain and move smoothly and be strong and working with the bodies and spines length so that we get better hip stabilization so that there's not the you know, like your butt is sore, your knees sore, and your ankle being sore as well. Yeah, you mentioned like the two programs, Foundation and Be Activated. Is there an order? Is Foundation first? Tell me, explain that a little bit. Uh, well, I use that, we use them in conjunction with each other. So there's a, an assessment system that comes in with using Be Activated. Be Activated divides the body into three different sections. And starting from the inside out, there's a zone one, There's a zone two and a zone three. So in its most simplest form, zone one looks at the psoas, the diaphragm, the psoas, and the glutes. Zone one, strong, right? And everyone knows that area as the core, right? The strong core. Mm -hmm. But think of it going all around the body in there. Then zone two, we're moving out. So you think quadriceps, hamstrings, um, chest, part part of that middle back, low back area, and then zone three, think of shoulders, neck, and above, and then knees and below. Mm-hmm. So there's a system of where we go with the clients. We first meet them. We'll look at them while they walk. We'll do some basic squat assessments, walking assessments, maybe a light jog. Then we'll do some passive assessments where we will get them on the table, on the floor, and look at their zone one, zone two, zone three. And number one we look at is the zone one, whether they're breathing right whether they're hit, whether they're able to perform hip flexion, and so that's the psoas, and whether the glutes are fine, which is the support system of the body. And then from there, we decide if we need to do some muscle activation, where we look at different activation points in the body, and we go in and just kind of palpate the body, kind of wake up those sense, those areas of the body, use our thumb, maybe go in and use uh, teach the client how to use a lacrosse ball to release. Um, or maybe a foam roller to release certain specific areas. Then from there, as we get those parts moving better, then we look at our foundation training template, which there are a series of poses that gets to the muscles and gets them to work in isometric contractions to get them to fire, especially in the glute area. Um, and in the hip area, again, that's the, the core, the center of our body, because we were meant to not collapse into the body, but to explode, 
power, right? So when we look at someone who's bursting out of the gates or running down a football field or even a basketball player, right? That explosion mm-hmm. happens from the center. I see. So it really sounds like you you really take your clients and members step by step through this. So you're you're taking care of them at every at every phase. So for the first yeah. time, you know, visitor, for somebody that's coming to see you for the first time, you must get questions. What are like the one or two biggest questions that you get from a new person coming in to see you? The the biggest one is how long do I have to do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can just stop how and it'll long? be fine, right? <laughs> Right, right. And so, for example, when we do a, a pure foundation training session or um, for the, with, the, with the isometric uh, poses and movements, um, that can take anywhere from a half hour to an hour. You know, like it can take up a whole session because we're teaching the clients elements of the foundation training uh, that is the basis for every pose. So, for example, or not, for example, foundation training is based on anchoring, principles of anchoring and decompression. And that might take a little bit of while, a while but there are nuances um, in there on how to spread the feet apart, how to use the feet to suction the ground, to hold the body down so that when we breathe, we decompress and breathe. The body is there holding stable. The foundation training and the be activated are self-care tools. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to teach our clients to be in control and take care of their lives and how they work out and to be more body aware so that they know that, oh, I have something going on my calf. What is going on on that side of the body? Or actually more often than not, if something, for example, on the right side, someone has a right uh, pain in their right calf, I actually go looking over on the opposite side because the body is built, not just muscles and that's traditional thinking, oh, my calf hurts, I'm going to rub out my calf. I'm going to put some um, Bengay on it to get rid of the soreness when actually the, 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 the kink in the chain happened on the other side because that right side was working hard for the left side because someone on the left side of the body was kind of lazy and hanging out and not doing their job. Ah, so, so Caroline, I know there's a lot of, have you, do you see a lot of people that come in that may have tried a lot of, you know, uh, self-help DVD workouts and, and failed with that. Do you see that? And do you see a lot of misconceptions that come in with people trying to work out and, and not choosing the right workout? I don't, th- yes, I, I guess I want to say that not choosing the right workout. And I think what we do is we break down each movement and we look at the client's movement. So they have a goal, right? I want to be able to do a chest to floor burpee and rock it. And then we see the client and see that there are some movement patterns that need to be corrected as well as working on some of their imbalances. So we say, hey, that's great. You have a goal, first of all. Let's take a few steps back and break it down and teach them how to get to that chest to floor burpee or to that 5K without being in pain. So we take a step back. We work together. These are the exercises that help you. And this is the, this is how you should do. We like think of regressing a movement. This is the best way to do it so that you stay safe. And then as you are learning to do the exercise correctly, the muscles that you need for that exercise will be developed and will be able to support you so you can crush it. So you've, you've got a lot of credentials here, Caroline. What got you started? What inspired you to get into fitness to begin with? Well, I... I've always been in movement, I guess, per se. I do come from a family of athletic people, but I wasn't the athlete. I actually was a dancer. So I've always been moving. I can't catch a ball (laughs) (laughs) to save my life or hit a ball to save my life. But I do appreciate the movement and I love the movement. So I always have to move. So after I retired from being a dancer, I just came into the fitness world because I always had to move. I always had to sweat. Then uh, about four or five years ago, I decided I wanted to become a runner. And again, like a lot of my clients, like, I just want to move. I want to run. And then I wound up having some injuries um, come through. For example, I had you know, a common ailment, um, shin splints, and sometimes plantar fasciitis. Mm. And then I also had a, a recurring dance injury, which a lot of people have, um, not just dancers, but runners too, um, some SI joints and sciatica coming on my right side. Mm-hmm. 
someone suggested that I research foundation training or my business partner and I researched foundation training and we both found that it had made a difference um, in our lives. And especially, I mean, I'm so, I'll be honest with you, I'm nearing 50 and then at the age of 45 decided I wanted to become a runner. And I do, I love it. I love running. I think it's great. Um, and it's just some way to get moving, be out there, be with nature. And I wanted to continue to keep doing it. I don't want age to be a factor and that's what I tell my my clients too, is that age shouldn't be a factor. How does your body feel? How can we get you feeling great? Mm-hmm. Not just feeling like you're 25. I want you to feel 50 and feel fierce. Ah, to wrap this up, Caroline, you know, it's the new year. Everybody wants to get fit now. What's one thing that people have to consider if they want to be successful with their goals and getting fit and staying fit? So with foundation training, the activation, I think the thing that people to keep them going and to keep with their goals is to make sure, I don't know how to say this correctly, but to not under recover. And that's where the tools of foundation training and activation come into play to make sure you get the proper recovery. And I got that term under recovery because someone came right up to me and said, I know you, I know your type. You like to throw down, you like to be out there, but you have to be aware and be careful and not to under recover. And I've had these tools at my disposal. And that was within the last four months because some of my injuries were starting to come back. But then, you know, I focus on my clients. I love my work. I love what I do. But then, you know, there's that time every single person needs to take a few minutes to themselves and get their own self-care. That's really sage advice. When you said under recover, I get it. That's like a like a new term, like like nose blind. Right. (laughs) I get it. Yes. Don't. Yes, exactly. exactly. (laughs) Don't under recover. That's really sage advice. because I do know people that like to throw down and they think the more the better, but not really. Right. And it's, and it's hard when you're that kind of person where you're like, Oh, I'm going to get my sweat on. You get that high and that's, Mm -hmm. you know, you feel great. But then what is on the other side of that? You know, you do have to recover and you do have to let the mind go. And and I think you had someone on your show in the last month or two that was talking about that. Like if you didn't get to work out that day, it's okay. Let it go. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people are like, I got to get it in, got to get it in, got to get it in. It's like, did you rest this week? Right. (laughs) <laughs> right. There might have been some signs out there, the world telling you like, hey, you do need to slow down. Mm-hmm. So on these on those days and I have clients that will do a hundred mile bike ride and the next day they're seeing me to help them do their foundation training and they're like, Hey, you know, I think I might have overdid it. Um, I need some activation as well. Right on. So Caroline, for our listeners out there that are nearby you want to connect, want to learn more, want to work with you, how do they find you? You can find us at summitsperformancetraining.com. Contact is right over on, on our webpage as well. You can send us a contact form and we will get right back to you. Caroline, I so really appreciate that. it. Thank you so much for joining me on the program and taking the time to, to share with our listeners. Happy New Year to you and I wish you continued success for you, for Summit Performance Training and for all of your clients. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come in here and chat it up. This is a special edition of the program on health, nutrition, and fitness. On this segment, my guest is Justin Quant from the Foundry Chicago that has two locations here in Chicago, Illinois. Justin, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate the uh, opportunity. So, Justin, tell us just a little bit of an overview on the Foundry Chicago and who it is that you help. Absolutely. So the Foundry is a fitness and performance business, and we specialize in coaching people to achieve their goals. Our goal is to help um, professionals working downtown just develop and discover, we call it the inner badass. So just kind of that best version of yourself that's always there, uh, but sometimes you need a little help and a little guidance to really express it and fully bring it out. So this is more than just a regular old typical gym. Give me, give me the difference and, you know, um, what should people expect when they come to see you? Absolutely. So the, big, the biggest difference between us and what most, uh, most of our 
uh, peers are doing is that we apply a one-to-one relationship with each person that we work with. The training itself is done uh, both individually as well as in small groups, but every person that's a member at our gym has a, uh, has a primary coach that they're assigned to. And internally, we call our coaches coaches for life, meaning we're not just here to help train people to get in shape for their wedding or for, for the summer or some kind of short-term event. We want to establish a lifelong relationship with the people we're working with so that we can set you up for uh, lifelong success with your health and fitness. So do folks typically, when they come to see you, are these, you know, lifelong fitness enthusiasts or do you find quite a bit of beginners as well? Who are the pe- the people that come reach out to you? Yeah, it's uh, the great thing is that it's both. And we have some people, uh, because the, the training itself is, uh, is challenging and it, we learn some pretty advanced skills. We've had a lot of success with people who, who ha- do have an athletic background and want to kind of maintain that feeling of, of being athletic and maybe they played sports previously. Um, but we've had a ton of success as well with people who have no fitness background or no sports background and may have felt a little bit intimidated to get started. Um, but by using this approach, even though there's, uh, even though the, the work that we do is challenging, the support provided by the coach and the structure of having other people there really allows them to be successful in a way that they haven't found uh, by trying to do it themselves or by working with a personal trainer or by just doing some sort of general class-based uh, fitness that they, that they may have tried previously. Let's speak to the novice for a minute here because I'm sure I've heard many folks before say, oh, that workout's too advanced, that's too extreme, that's, I sh- it, it's not really made for a person like me, I, ha- I don't have an athletic background and, and I'm a beginner at fitness. What would you say to those folks? Yeah, you know, the first thing that I usually ask people when they come in is I, I like to say, what do you want to get out of this? You know, what, you know, what are some of the things that you'd like to accomplish? And um, although that question initially might get a somewhat surface level response, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of people might say something like, well, I'd like to lose a few pounds or get a little bit more, sh- you know, get in a little bit better shape. And, uh, usually the follow up, I'll say, I'll say, well, why is that important to you? Um, a big part of our model is not just physical training, but also the psychology behind being fit and being healthy. So we like to understand upfront what's really motivating somebody. And if I ask enough questions and kind of can dig down, a lot of times people will reveal something a lot more personal to them. Like maybe um, they used to do uh, something athletic such as triathlons or run a lot and they had a certain feeling when they were at that point in their life or they uh, or really their current physical shape inhibits them from doing some of the life activities that they want. We had a member, for example, who came to us and um, he said, you know, I've got two twin daughters and they're six years old. And I realized that I don't want to get down onto the floor to play with them because it's hard for me to stand up. And when he first started, he weighed over 300 pounds. This is about two years ago. And uh, over the course of the last two years, he's lost over 100 pounds through, the, through our program and wow. has become a really great athlete in the process. So, you know, just understanding what somebody's motivation is, is, um, is key uh, because I'm trying to help, uh, help people understand what's important to them and why it's important to them. And unless we kind of get that up front, then it's easy to lose motivation. Um, but once we've established that in terms of actually getting over the hump and being consistent, we do something unique, which is we do, uh, we do an entirely personal training or we call it private coaching based onboarding into our program. So although we have a class program, we don't admit people into that program until they've first gone through our one-on-one training. That's for a couple of different reasons. You know, number one, we want them to learn the movements that are in our program and so they can feel confident and safe and successful when doing them. And number two, it's so that we can develop a relationship with them and so that they can develop a cadence of coming and having accountability to somebody else um, to develop that, that habit of, of coming into the gym regularly. Uh, if those things can be established, then the, you know, We'll make progress over time because we have we we have an effective training program. 
So, Justin, I've heard that, you know, there's a there's so many, seems like every week or so, there's a new DVD workout at home program that comes out. And there's always some new hottest fitness craze that happens. But how come, I've heard yeah. a lot of people that, that get them, they're just, they, they're not successful with them. Do you find that as well? And, you know, what would you say about all those workout programs? Yeah, you know, I think about this a lot. And um, there are a lot of well-designed programs out there, including a lot of DVD-based programs that would be effective uh, from a scientific standpoint. The thing about fitness is that it's very emotional and uh, psychological. And I think at the end of the day, my my own research and experience has taught me that it's, it's ultimately a more of a low tech business and that there's a human element that's key to being successful. And that's what we are really bringing into the marketplace is that human component where there's a person here that cares about you and wants you to be successful. And is in a way uh, also holding you accountable to the goals that you set. Um, research shows that, you know, a lot of people, it's January right now, and a lot of people set New Year's resolutions, and, and 75% of all Americans have a health and fitness goal as a New Year's resolution. Uh, but in that, over two-thirds of people will give up on, the, on their health and fitness resolution within five weeks of the New Year starting, um, which is kind of sad because this is something that's important to, to everyone. Um, the thing about it is that People are a lot more, if there's nobody else kind of paying attention to it, it's easy to sort of let yourself off the hook. Mm -hmm. Fitness is challenging and, and you have to develop a, a, a cadence and a habit and you have to get through the soreness and kind of a little bit of, you know, potentially some discomfort and especially at the initial onset of starting a new program. Uh, our kind of solution to that is to say, you have a coach who's, uh, who's, looking after you, who's expecting you to be there, who you're actually, you know, meeting with. There are other people who care about you at the gym um, that once you get into the group program who are going to, you know, miss you if you're not there. Uh, there are relationships and friendships that we develop. So we've combined sort of the science of exercise with uh, essentially tribal theory uh, to create a program that works for people over the long term and keeps them motivated and interested, um, you know, beyond just the initial start of a new year when somebody get, gains the resolve to start a new fitness program. That makes a ton of sense now because come to think of it, you know, having seen a lot of these workout programs myself, uh, that's the one missing element that, that you mentioned to earlier. What's your reason why? And without that, the, the motivation is very temporary. And that's, I can see why people will start a program and, and quit right away. Cause they're totally, it, the mindset is missing and that's what you bring mm -hmm. with the, with the coaching. It's amazing. It's just like, it's just such a, 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 a small missing piece is a huge, you know, swing and it's a hinge, a little hinge that swings a big door. So Justin, how, how did you get started in fitness? What inspired you? Yeah, so I uh, I grew up playing tennis competitively, and I uh, from the age of seven uh, picked up a racket and found I really had a passion for playing tennis. And I was you know fortunate enough that my my parents um, were able to to provide me with lessons. And I I by the time I was ten years old, I was playing I was nationally ranked and I was playing tournaments all over the country. Um, so that's a huge part of my life. And I went on to play uh, Division One college tennis and play post-college for a little while. And um, really, really great, awesome experience in my life. The thing about that, though, is when I became uh, post-college and I started working, uh, I, I was a little bit challenged by the fact that fitness for me meant going to a tennis court and, and playing tennis or swimming or doing some kind of sport. So living in Chicago and uh, working at a desk job, I joined a gym. I understood that there were gyms available and that was a fitness option, but I felt really dissatisfied and kind of bored with um, just going to the regular gym. So 
I didn't exactly know what to do about it. I would maybe play some basketball, do some swimming, just try to do some things to keep myself interested. But after a few years of that, I decided to just do more research myself. And through that process, I started learning about a lot of different new training methodologies and things to experiment with for my own training. Um, Initially, this was just simply for my own benefit. I didn't envision creating a business around that. But uh, what happened is that at my work, I would, we had a little gym space in, in our office and I would work out there and other people at work would frequently ask me casually, well, how do I lose weight or how do I get stronger? Or, what are you doing today? And over time I found that I, I had this little workout club that I was sort of running at my, at the, at the, at my work. And I felt really passionate about helping people uh, improve their fitness or, or learn more about it. And it sort of dawned on me for the first time that this was something that I was inherently motivated and interested to learn and understand. And that for a lot of people, it was a real challenge even to get the right information, let alone figure out how to implement it. Uh, so that kind of planted the idea in my mind. And I, I started, I built a skeleton business plan for it. And, and I kind of thought to myself, okay, one day I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I was in retrospect granted a gift by getting laid off in 2010. And, uh, after kind of processing that for a few days, I thought to myself, you know, this is my opportunity to really pursue something that I feel really passionately about. So, um, I set about, uh, working on my business. I spent, I spent about a year just working in the industry, uh, even donating my time for a large portion of that. I built out a small little, um, workout space in the, in the back of the apartment that I was living in. And I invited a couple of my friends to come over and train in the mornings, Mm -hmm. uh, free of charge just to get some experience. And, uh, and then just kind of continued from there. Um, I opened my first facility in, in 2012. Um, we opened our second facility in 2014 and it's just been kind of an incremental thing where it's grown, uh, as time went on. And and now we have a, a, a larger team Looking back, it's kind of uh, it's 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 kind of amazing to think of everything that's happened in the last five years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely something that makes me makes me really proud. Wow! Congratulations, that's terrific. I love hearing people being able to work in their within their passions, and and you're doing yeah, it. So thank congratulations. You. Thank you. So tell so for somebody listening now that you know, hey, it's the new year and they are having that new year's resolution to, to finally lose weight and get fit. What's one thing that those people should consider, you know, to, so that they can be really successful this time? Yeah. The number one thing is accountability. You know, whether it, um, you know, that's what we focused on, but whether it's coming to a place like ours or through another mechanism, uh, you need some social support to be effective in these goals because there's going to be a morning when you wake up and it's cold and it's dark and you're sore and you just don't feel like going. And uh, it helps a lot to have uh, a somebody else who's who's got your back and who cares about your success and will help to remind you when it's challenging that you still want to do it. Um, you know, for example, I participate in a, in an online group uh, on Facebook that's for getting up early in the morning, because that's something that's important to me. And I wanted to remain accountable to it. And there's things that I want to get done early in the morning before I even go to work. Um, So that's something that for me, but I benefit a lot from the support of the other people who are also um, taking on this path and want to do it. We do something similar for our members with the people I work with. I have a little group and actually a a tracking app where we make some commitments to our health and fitness daily. And then we can see whether one another has has checked off those commitments. So I think, uh, you know, the the uh, the kind of the first step would be to get some support from your circle, whether it be your spouse or your friend or your coworker, enlist the help of another person who also has a similar goal that's going to be your buddy in this process. Um, because one, it's more fun. And two, you'll be more successful if you have, if you have another group. Um, and, uh, 
And the second level up would be to look to have some kind of professional coach, um, whether it be us or whether it be, you know, at another business that offers something similar, having somebody who's knowledgeable in the area, excuse me, knowledgeable in the area who can help guide you through the process will pay large dividends. And and doing this for our clients has kind of opened me up to, um, has helped me appreciate, like, as I mentioned, I seek out coaches and other aspects in my life. Mm-hmm. Health and fitness just happens to be something that I understand pretty well, but there's other things where I need coaching and help. So just that whole concept of, of receiving coaching, I think is really powerful uh, for health and fitness and, and possibly for a lot of other things in your life too. That's sage advice, Justin. So for our listeners out there who are in the Chicagoland area and want to connect with you, learn more and, and work with you, how do they find you? Where should they go? Absolutely. So the best way would be through uh, either by calling us or through our website. Uh, our website URL is thefoundrychicago.com. Um, the word uh, T-H-E-F-O-U-N-D-R-Y, chicago.com. Uh, on our website, you can find some information about what we do. And there's a section on there called Become a Member that has a form you can fill out to provide some basic information so that we can connect and give you a call back. Um, the process is, is, uh, is, is as follows. After we connect and we learn a little bit about each other, we invite our prospective clients to come in and meet with us face-to-face. And we do a comp- complimentary session to really understand what's important to you, why are you doing this, um, what do you want to achieve with it, and then share a little bit about our approach and really just explore and see whether that's a good fit. Uh, we want to work with people who want to get better at this and want to be serious about it. Um, you know, the, if you look at the statistics on gym memberships, it's it's kind of alarming. Of people in Illinois who have a gym membership, two and a half million people, um, less than 10% of those people will actually attend the gym at all after March of this year. And Wow. <clears throat> we're, we're not in that business, right? We don't want to, um, have a space where people don't come and we collect their money. We want to actually make a difference and an impact and obtain these outcomes because that's what inspires us as, as people and as coaches. So, you know, our program is a, is a little bit more involved. Um, it's a little bit more of an investment than your traditional gym, but we get a lot, you get a lot more out of it and a much higher chance of success. Um, and that, that introductory session is designed to kind of explore whether that's a good fit and then decide whether, you know, we should move forward. That's terrific. Hey, Justin, this has been great. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with our listeners today. And I wish you continued success for the Foundry Chicago, for you and for all of your members. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate that. That wraps up another episode of our Health, Nutrition, and Fitness Special Edition. If you know a remarkable expert, business, person, place, or thing that we should feature on the show, drop me a line on my email, radioguest at markimperial.com. That's radioguest at markimperial.com. Until next time, I'm Mark Imperial. Take care and make it a remarkable week. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.